taking this time to speak with us, Evan. Um, do the Rockets have a very athletic stretch four or five type player in Christian Wood? How do you think you would fit playing alongside of him? Um, I just want to be in the best situation possible. Um, if that's the team that they feel uh, is best for me to uh, fit with them, and I'm just going to do my best. And um, I feel like I can play uh, alongside with anyone. And, um, uh, yeah, I feel like uh, that would be a, a cool fit um, either way. Um, I feel like I'm just a great player and um, have a great um, like team chemistry with a lot of different people. So um, I feel like I can play uh, with a lot of different people. And, and to follow up on that, does watching the youth and athleticism of the Rockets excite you knowing that you could potentially end up here in Houston? Thank you. Um, yes, um, they're, they're young, a very young team and um, very athletic. Um, I'm also young and athletic, so uh, that's a, very exciting. Evan Damerel, when you're ready. Hey, Evan, thank you for your time. How you doing? Good, good. Um, how have your conversations with the Cleveland Cavaliers gone? And to kind of jump off the question before, how do you think you would pair alongside Jared Allen if he resigns at Cleveland this offseason? Um, basically, like I said before, um, I feel like uh, I, I get along with a lot of different players very well. Um, I'm very versatile, um, big, and so I feel like I could bounce off of whoever. Um, as you see, I play with uh, my brother in, um, at USC, and um, we're like a duo. So I feel like uh, I can be that with a lot of different players in the league. And how did your conversations with Cleveland go? Um, all the conversations I had with all the teams have been uh, well so far. Mark Medina, when you're ready. Evan, thanks for doing this. Uh, first off, were you able to say which teams uh, you've worked out with, talked with? And secondly, what do you think has gone into being able to develop a skill set of what an, a modern NBA center is in terms of being able to play inside, outside, and defend multiple positions? Um, yeah, I just let uh, my handle or my agent handle all of that um, um, with the teams and everything. Um, and then as far as skill set and all that, I feel like, um, for the, in the modern day NBA big, you have to be able to shoot, um, guard multiple positions as well. Um, be able to stretch the floor, put the ball on the floor a little bit. And, um, all those skill sets, I feel I have been refining and getting a lot better at during this pre-draft and a lot of the skills I was already, uh, I felt like I was already pretty good at as well. So. Alan Silva, when you're ready. Hi, Evan. It's Alan Silva from Costa Rica for PZ Basket. What are some aspects from your game that you think you will definitely improve while playing the NBA? Um, I feel like shooting, I would definitely improve. Um, this past year, I, I didn't have a terrible shooting year, but um, I, there's room for improvement. I feel like I will make a pretty big stride um, playing throughout the years in the NBA and on shooting. Next question is from Spencer Davies. Spencer Davies, basketballnews.com. Hey, Evan. Now, I'm sure that you don't listen to outside noise, but there's, uh, you know, a lot of tags that are associated with you as a prospect being high upside and, you know, having a high ceiling. Uh, does that at all motivate you to come in and be immediately impactful for any team? And how do you feel about, um, you know, having that attached to your, uh, you know, prospect name? Um, yeah, it gives me a lot of motivation. Um, I'm already very motivated to come into the league and be a very impactful player um, on whatever team I land on. And, um, but seeing that, yeah, it definitely motivates me. Omari Sankofa, when you're ready. Hey, Evan, thanks for doing this. Uh, you worked out with the uh, Pistons recently, right? Um, I can't really disclose um, all the workouts I've been. Sure. Well, overall, I guess uh, sort of what have those conversations been like, if you could uh, reveal that 
And uh, then also when you look at that that roster, just how do you see yourself? And of course, as a team, you have Killian Hayes, uh, you know, you have Sadiq Van, Isaiah Stewart who are with the Olympic team. Just how do you see yourself fitting a core that's that young and obviously has some uh, upside? Um, I feel like, um, as I said earlier, all my conversations with all the teams have been um, very well um, so far. So, and I feel like uh, Detroit is a good team as well. And I feel like I could fit in a lot of different um, organizations and different styles of plays and stuff because I played in many different um, styles of plays and organizations and stuff growing up. So um, I feel like I can adapt to a lot of different things. Next question is from Stephen Lounge, when you're ready. Hey, Evan, this is Stephen Lung from Sportsnet in Toronto. Uh, I, I, just wanted, I just wanted to know, like, um, you, the, the Raptors have a, uh, a kind of reputation for being really good at uh, player development, uh, player development, development team. Um, what, what have you heard about, uh, about the Raptors in that regard? Um, I've heard similar things as well. Um, they're a, a good player um, development organization. Um, they, when players get there, they get better. Um, and uh, Gray City and all that. So I feel like <clears throat> overall, there's a lot of different teams that have that uh, aspect. And uh, Toronto is definitely one of the, um, a, a good team that uh, does a lot of player de development. Thank you. Next question is from Mario Gamboa. Hi, Evan. Thanks for your time. Mario Gamboa from Grupo Legado. Um, in recent years, we have seen the importance of the big man in the NBA grow. Uh, Jokic winning MVP last year, and B. Giannis dominating the East. What do you feel makes you different from the rest of them, and how can you contribute in this position regardless of the team that drafts you? Um, I feel like my agility and length and defensive presence is my top main things that make me different. Um, I feel like I can guard uh, almost every position and move my feet very well. Um, as well on the offensive end, um, I can shoot the ball on a pretty um, uh, well clip and then as well put it on the floor, um, run the floor as well really good. So um, that's are some aspects I feel like that are a little bit different and are better than uh, other bigs. Thanks, Evan. Cody Taylor, when you're ready. Hey, Evan, appreciate your time today. What, what are some of the, the qualities that, that you want to see from the team that eventually drafts you? Um, just a team that really believes in me and really um, believes that I could be a impact player right uh, coming in from the uh, to right, right coming into the league. Um, but yeah, that would probably be the main like aspect is just believing in me and trusting in me and trying to develop me into um, a better player. Chris Fedor, when you're ready. Hey, Evan, thanks for doing this, man. Um, whether it's the workouts with teams that you've had or the conversations with teams that you've had leading up to the draft, what are you trying to show them or, or what are you trying to let them know about you? Like what's most important that they take away from those? Um, that I'm different than most players. Like I can um, be a really good, very good player in years to come into the league um, and just show them that I'm not just an, an average pick, like I, I, I am Evan Mobley or whatever. So um, I'm just trying to do my best and um, everywhere I go, whether it's an interview or a workout and um, just show them um, the best version of me. Thank you, best of luck. Yep. Next question is from Julia Adams. Hi, Evan. Thanks for being here. Um, I was just curious what NBA player, either current or former, would you say your game most resembles? Um, there's a, a lot of players that people compare me to. 
Um, but I feel like I have, every, everyone's game is different. Um, everyone plays different, have different tendencies and stuff. So that's what makes people different and all their games different. Um, so I would, I wouldn't say I have like a perfect comparison to anyone. It's just um, my game is my game. And I feel like, um, yeah, that's basically it. <laughs> Thank you. Alder Almo, when you're ready. Hi, Evan. Thanks for doing this. Uh, I'd like to ask if you will, if, if you watch the NBA Finals and is the is Giannis was Giannis was so dominant in that uh, series. Is that a level that you aspire to to reach in the NBA? And and I, I would like to ask if ever you work out or met outside the top three teams. Thank you. Average what? If you ever met or work out uh, with teams outside of the top three in the lottery? Oh, um, um, but yeah, the finals, I definitely watched those finals. Um, I definitely inspire or aspire to be um, in that position soon, hopefully. Um, I definitely want to be an NBA champion on whatever team I end up on. And um, hopefully get a lot more champions besides just one. So yeah, I, I definitely aspire to be on that level or, or even higher. Um, and I can't, um, the teams won't let me disclose like who I work out with and stuff. Thank you, I understand. Have time for three more for Evan. Jonathan Fagan, you're next. Uh, thanks for doing this, Evan. A lot of talk, as, as you might know about your ceiling, what do you suppose that is? When you are your best, what do you think you will be? Um, I think I'll be a generational player that um, no one has really seen before. Um, that's what I'm inspiring to be. And um, I'm just gonna keep working and staying in the gym until I get there. Thank you. Rod Beard, when you're ready. Hey, Evan, I, thanks for doing this. I, I want to see if there were parts of your game that maybe you didn't get a chance to fully show at uh, USC and uh, you're looking to kind of unleash or unveil once you get to the NBA. Um, I feel like uh, there was a little, bit of, um, a little bit of athleticism that I could show even more um, than I did because in um, – college game is more compact and um, everyone's sitting in the paint more in the league. Everything's spaced out because there's shooters and there's for the three point line and stuff. So um, the lanes will be open more. Um, so that, and then as well, um, I feel like uh, shooting, um, I'm going to be uh, more, show some more of that in the league. Yeah, time for one more. Uh, Juan Baracco, when you're ready. Evan, how's it going, man? Juan Baracco for Salimo, Uruguay. Evan, uh, tell me something. Is uh, coming to the to the league, to the NBA, uh, a dream that you have uh, since you were a kid? And a quick follow-up, uh, who's uh, the player that made you fell in love with the game? Thank you. Um, yeah, the NBA has always been a dream um, growing up. Uh, people thought it was just like, oh, you're a kid. Yeah, you want to go to the NBA. Yeah. But I really believed it. So that's always been a dream. And then um, growing up, probably just my dad, he inspired me and got me into the game the most. So that's who like, really made me fall in love with it. 